Hey guys, welcome to the channel. G Babbitts here, and today I'm going to do my very first book review for Try the Impossible by Simon Aronson. Let's get right to it. Welcome, welcome. I'm Jeff Babbitts. Thank you for coming back to the channel. If it's your first time here, uh, welcome. I hope you enjoy the content. This is my first book review video. There will be plenty more in the future, but do bear with me because uh, you know, I'm new to this format. So I've done a lot of deck reviews so far on the channel. I plan to keep doing those, keep doing book reviews. Eventually there will be video and trick reviews uh, and tutorials also. However, today we're going to dive into this book. Now, if you stick around towards the end, I will be announcing a giveaway. First giveaway on the channel. I just hit 100 subscribers. I couldn't be more excited. And I want to share that excitement with you uh, by giving away a deck. So stay tuned for the details on that. Now, First though, why are we here? This book, Try the Impossible by Simon Aronson. This was self-published uh, back in early 2000s, 2001, uh, based on the copyright date. Uh, and it was one of many books by Simon. I'm gonna just take off the book cover here, or the dust jacket. Um, so you can get a look at the book itself. Uh, so this is actually on the back. Nice. The dust jackets, uh, I do keep them on when I store the books. But when I read, I do take them off to have it in all its glory. Uh, nice binding. Um, so why this book? Why did I get it? Why did I read it? Well, a few months ago, I was watching a master class by Matt Baker. And he started doing one trick. I knew right away, based on, he, he asked the spectators to pick numbers. I knew right away it'd be one of those counting tricks. I'm not a fan of the math based in counting tricks. Um, they, I, I like them, don't get me wrong, they just don't fit my style. They, they don't fit the way I like to perform. However, Matt Baker's performance, Matt Baker's trick, blew my mind. It, it just, I loved that trick and wanted to know it. Of course, it was a master class, so I did learn it, but he gave credit to it. It was completely based on a trick from this book. So what did I do? Well, I bought it. I went through it cover to cover. Uh, I spent January of this year reading it twice. Uh, I picked out the tricks that I liked, I picked out the tricks that I didn't, and I have a really good overall impression of it. So today we're going to talk about these tricks. I'll even tell you which trick uh, Matt Baker's was based on. Uh, but first, a little bit about the book. It's split into three sections. There's the first section, the undue influence principle. This thing is crazy. Um, it's it's Amazing how this works. It's math based, but it doesn't feel math based. Uh, the ability that that gives you, this principle, is just fantastic. The second section is called eccentrics. This is like a smorgasbord of tricks. They don't fit in other categories, they're just card tricks. Uh, and they're really strong too. The third is called unpacking the Aronson stack. It is all about, guess what? The Aronson stack, except a little twist. I'm going to briefly touch on each of the three, three sections and uh, a little bit of the postscript too while I tell you about this book. So the first section, uh, the undue influence principle. I'm going to read this here so we know what book we're looking at, right? Try the possible. This undue influence principle is amazing. Um, if you're looking for a method that allows you to do card tricks for two spectators at the same time. This is a beautiful way to do it. Now, I don't have two spectators here with me, but we can pretend I do, okay? We'll ask the first spectator on my right, hey, can you cut off about you know a third of the pack or so? Look at the card you cut to. It's gonna be this one here. Uh, and just remember that card. While they're doing that, Turn to the spectator on the left and say, can you please cut off you know, a healthy chunk of the cards here? Look at that card, and that'll be your card, okay? Cool. While they're looking at them, have a spectator place the cards, and we're good to go. Now, wouldn't it be magical if I snap my fingers over this deck and two cards turn themselves face up? That'd be great, right? And sure enough, we have two face-up cards. I didn't say it'd be your cards, right? <laughs> of course. Uh, we have one joker, 
and we have another joker. Now, that's interesting. That is quite interesting. These cards are going to help me locate the spectator's cards. This one here, for the first spectator, since it's closest, is going to whisper into my ear. Ah, he tells me that your card is 18th from the top. Don't believe me? Let's find out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. He, oh, he's shouting at me. Wow, he's saying that your card is 43rd from the top. Don't believe me? Let's count. That was 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. 40, 41, 42, 43. You can see why I don't like counting tricks. They take a long time. So, what was your card? Six of clubs. And yours? The three of spades. Now, you might be asking, you might be asking, how could I hear the cards? Speak to me. They were so quiet. But they weren't that quiet. In fact, they were shouting the values to me. This one shouted that yours was in the 18th position, and this one shouted that yours was in the 43rd. So that is the very first trick in this book. It's called prior commitment. You can kind of see why we committed to this prior. Um, Simon Aronson starts out and says that this is the best trick in the book. It says it right there in the text. Um, this is also the trick that Matt Baker based his routine on, the one that I really loved. Um, his is a little different in that you could name any numbers. You don't have to use these two jokers. You just have the spectators come up with numbers and the cards are at those positions. And it really didn't require much extra work. Um, fantastic. Now, I do disagree that this is the best trick in the book. Uh, there's another one later in The Undue Influence principal chapter that I like more. Um, it doesn't use the jokers, it doesn't use the written on numbers. I performed it a few times, uh, both of them, and for me, the other one gets the better reaction. Now, it's, it's difficult to display that one here without actual spectators. Uh, this one is more visual, so we went with this one. Awesome. So the second section of this book is called Eccentrics. Eccentrics. Uh, it's the smorgasbord. It's, it's a collection of different tricks uh, that, that don't really fit into categories by themselves. I do disagree with that uh, just a little bit because there are a subsection of those tricks that are all kind of grouped together. But for the most part, they're all just separate card tricks. Uh, there are 13 tricks in that section. 13 of them. I believe five are related. Uh, I'll get to that in a second. But of the 13... I only see myself performing maybe, maybe three of them. Now I've gone through card magic books before where I wouldn't do any of the tricks, or maybe there's only one trick I would do. Then there's some books where I would do almost all of them. Three out of one section of 13, uh, I give that a thumbs up. That's, that's not terrible. Um, especially when, you know, the cost of this book uh, gets you at least those three tricks, uh, but you get all these other ideas too. Um, anyway, about that subsection in here, it's based on uh, this, this principle or this idea or this technique that Simon came up with called Simon's Flash Speller. Simon's Flash Speller. It's a way to quickly, very quickly, be able to spell the name of any playing card. That's kind of strange, right? How would that work? But before we get to that, so there, there are actually um, the previous section with the Undue Influence. It used a, a principle that works really well with two spectators. In this section, there are tricks that work well with two spectators, but most of them are for a single spectator. Um, so if you need tricks that can do uh, find a card type of thing, like a single card, this section is really good for that. Um, Simon's Flash Speller. I haven't actually perfected this yet. I haven't done too much because I, I personally don't... Um, 
I personally don't do a lot of the spelling type of routine. It's like the counting ones. It's the same idea. It really is. Um, spelling and counting aren't different. One is you're counting numbers, the other is you're counting letters. So I don't really do routines like that. However, this flash speller it struck with me that if I ever needed to, there's an easy way to do it. Um, so one of the routines in this section, I'll actually get the name of it after, after I do a demo. I forgot the name. Um, it's like this. So you go to the spectator, you say, hey, we can um, have you pick a card just by spreading through, but we're not gonna do that. Instead, I'm gonna turn my back around. You're going to pick up a chunk of cards off the deck, doesn't matter how many, shuffle them as much as you want, take a look at the top card, and when you've done that, go ahead and just drop the rest of the deck on it, and then we'll proceed. Straightforward enough, right? Okay, and we're gonna do exactly that. We're gonna have the spectator do what we just demonstrated. We'll turn our backs, they'll cut off a chunk of cards, they'll mix it as much as they'd like to, and they'll look at the card. Remember, you don't see this, they see this, the spectator and all their friends. Hopefully they remember it, okay? Once they're done, they put it right there, as you instructed, and you turn back around and we're good to go. Now you say to them, hey, you've done all the magic so far, why don't you go ahead and find your card too. What? How do we do that? Well, in the beginning I said I could spread the cards and have you pick one. This time, for real. And you let them touch any card they like, and that card is going to spell to their selection. What? So they pick a card in the middle, we flip it over to mark a spot. We have the Jack of Spades. Okay, so we take it here, cut the deck, the Jack of Spades. We're going to spell this out. J. We have the counting card. We have J A C K. Jack of S P A D E S. For the first time, what was the name of your card? The Eight of Clubs. And that's the trick. Uh, I actually remember it's called Spell It Out. That is the name of this trick. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Again, um, I have it. <laughs> um, Simon's Flash Speller, you're supposed to memorize the uh, different kind of spelling tables and all those fun things. I have not yet done that uh, fluently. Uh, I do have to still count. And this trick does require different things for each count. Um, so, um, this one routine in here that I really love, Two Deck Canasta, when I read this, uh, light bulb went off and I, I loved it. So uh, I'm a fan of the show Penn and Teller's Fool Us uh, on TV. One of the tricks that they performed, the duo themselves, um, it, it was this trick. I didn't know it. I could not, I, I could figure out how they got specific cards, but not how they knew where they ended up. Uh, this is that trick. Of course, they, they did it in their own way. They, they put their own spin on it. But when I read this, I said, oh my goodness, I was wrong on every count. Uh, and it, it was just fantastic. I really love that. So I want to get to the third section of this book called Unpacking the Innocent Stack. Now, um, right before that, though, one fun thing that I read in here in the eccentric section was just a simple quote from Simon Aronson saying, uh, he doesn't actually, he didn't actually perform magic for a living. Um, I must have missed it somewhere in this book or somewhere else. I thought he was a professional you know, magician. That's what he did for a job. No, apparently uh, he was something else. Uh, I'm sure that it's in one of his other books and I must have misoverlooked. Uh, I must have overlooked it. Um, but yeah, I thought that was really cool. That vibes well with me since you know, this is a passionate hobby of mine. Um, but yeah, uh, I thought that was really cool to find out. Now, this next section, unpacking the Aronson stack. Uh, if you do mem deck work, you have to have a memorized stack. The Aronson stack is one of those popular, famous ones. Um, it, it has a lot of things built into it. That's what this section of this book is about. It's not about mem deck work. It's about using the stack for other things. Um, so we have mixed up cards and we can shuffle them. 
as much as we want. Now, I have tried uh, over the years to memorize a stack. Um, I've not done very well with it. And I hope that uh, things work out well here. So we can actually take a look through the cards. Um, they're in just a fun order, okay? Um, we'll riffle down and you'll select any card, we'll stop there, and this will be your card. Remember it, because I won't, I can't see it. <laughs> um, that's that. And then we just give the deck a few cuts, and we're good to go. Now, if you're here, what I would be saying to you is, I'm going to read your mind. I'm going to get this impression from you, and I'm going to start now. I need you to start thinking of the suit. I want you to think of the suit of your card. I'm picking up S, P, A, D, E, S, spades. With your card a spade. Don't tell me your card, don't tell me your card. But it wasn't a spade, that's unfortunate. Uh, it wasn't a spade. Hold on, wait, wait with me, bear with me. That was a mistake. Um, sorry, I haven't had enough coffee yet. Uh, I'm actually getting something else. S keep thinking of your suit. C L U B. What, was it a club? No. Well, I'm getting a strong impression it is a right card. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Okay, let me whew, think about it real hard. D I A M O N D S. Diamonds. Was your card a diamond? No? Okay. Okay. Well, you wouldn't be really impressed if I told you it was hard, now would you? No. Okay, I'm gonna make it up to you and find the value. We know it's a hard process of elimination. I'm gonna find the value. I want you to think of the value. Uh, you have ace through king, you have 13 possible values. Focus on what your card was. I'm getting A, C, E. Was your card an ace? The ace of hearts. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I did tell you I'd make it up to you in the value. Before the ace of hearts, uh, I said it would be a diamond. I was wrong. But before that, I said it'd be a club. I was wrong there, too. Originally, I thought it'd be a spade. And that is finding the aces. Yes. Uh, this is a fantastic routine. It's simple, straight to the point. It, it gets you, um, it gets you all of the the four aces, the nice four ace production, um, a little kind of a magician in trouble there type of thing, and it's got a, a decent kicker at the end. It's quick if you want to do a quick routine. Um, it could be an opener. Uh, it can lead into something else. What was the actual name of this routine? You asked. Well, let me take a quick look. Um, aces awry. Producing the aces. Um, yeah, there are actually, so cool thing about this is uh, there are alternate procedures in here. Um, almost every, if not every single trick does have an ending which provides more info. Some of them actually have different handlings for routines. This whole last section is about things using the stack. Uh, if you didn't pick up on that, this is in Aaron's in stack order. Uh, and there are different ways to spell very cleanly, just like that, two different four of a kinds, um, poker hands and different things like that. And it's really nice. Um, I enjoyed that. Uh, I don't do a lot of spelling. I also don't use Aronson stack. I have been trying to get into mem deck work more. I have Mnemonica, uh, if I pronounce that correctly, uh, Juan Tamers' book. I have Bound to Please by Simon Aronson, which includes a stack to remember, which is all about this stack. Um, and I just haven't uh, devoted myself to it all the way. Now, what's really cool about this is, you know, almost everything I've read about different stacks is tricks to do once it's memorized. This whole section is 
uh, you know, other tricks to do that don't require memorizing it. So in the process of memorizing the deck, I can actually work with the stack. I can get used to performing with it in stack order, uh, maintaining the stack or partial stacks. Um, it, it's really neat. So I'm actually going to end the review of this book here and say that I really like this book. It's, it's over 20 years old now. Um, I will leave a link down in the description where you can pick up a copy for yourself. Um, if you're into Simon Aronson, you might already have this book. If you don't, I highly recommend it. Um, again, I mentioned there are routines in here that I'm not going to use. Uh, I'm not a big fan of counting, not a big fan of spelling. Uh, but the principles, the ability to be able to do them and use things like the flash speller, um, it's fantastic. The undue influence principle, it is very, very, very strong. Um, when I was at Magi Fest a few weeks ago, I did these routines and the magicians there, they, did, they just had no idea what was going on. Again, using these, they immediately knew something was up. But there are other routines in there that don't use cards like this. They use regular cards uh, in the deck and you can kind of mix them. There are different ways to do them in different positions. Uh, and I also mentioned Matt Baker has a routine that actually replaces these. Same, same trick, but you can make up the numbers with the spectators and that's really fun. Uh, so try the impossible by Simon Aronson. Thumbs up. If you've stuck around this long, uh, hopefully you remember that there will be a giveaway. Uh, I've hit 100 subscribers, so excited because of that. Uh, I really didn't think it would happen this soon. And I imagine you eventually, most people who put out content do get you know, at least 100. Uh, but I've, I've just been so thrilled that people are here hanging out. Uh, I, really, I really appreciate all of you. And to show it, I wanna give away a deck. Uh, this is the first giveaway I've done. I want to give away a deck of in-session playing cards, junior, junior year. This is by Danny Carey. Um, this was a Kickstarter campaign. You can check out the review I did a few weeks ago for this deck. Uh, but to enter, all you have to do, like this video, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and drop a comment down below about what your favorite type of card magic is. Do you like spelling tricks? Do you like those self-workers? Uh, are you a fan of heavy slights? Let me hear all about it. And I'm actually going to use that info to help feed into which kind of book reviews I do in the future, which kind of tricks that I demonstrate, and eventually what kind of tutorials I also teach. So enter below. I'm going to let this run for about two weeks, and then we'll pick a winner. As always, I'm G. Babbitts, and I'll catch you next time.